What's up guys, it's Fufu here with my GBA week 3 battle against John Origins who you should know because he's been featured on my channel before, he's a friend of mine and he's got some great content, he does really great competitive battles on his channel so you should definitely check them out if you haven't already, um, yeah he's a great guy so I'll leave his link in the description. Um, this was a pretty interesting matchup, it's on showdown this week unfortunately um, because Wi-Fi was playing up a bit, it was saying that John might have had an elite legal Pokemon set which I'm not sure about everything seemed legal to me you guys can point out in the comments if you see any dodgy activity on his side of things um, but yeah I, I, it was fine from what we played and I don't know why Wi-Fi was yeah, it was just more stringent controls now I think so I don't really know why so it's gonna be on showdown so that we can use the sets that we wanted to use and yeah, it was it was a pretty interesting matchup. John has a, a funny roster. It's got lots of steel types. He's got an Excadrill, a Jirachi, and a Ferrothorn, which means that my Curum B was not going to be doing too much. So I decided not to bring that. He also has Talonflame, which is pretty scary. Um, but I saw from quite early on that my Sharpedo had pretty great sweeping capabilities. The only things I have to watch out for on his team are Talonflame. Um, but I could potentially run Aqua Jet on my Sharpedo for that. It does a lot of damage, a lot of damage. And also Ferrothorn, which is a pretty great stop to my Sharpedo. So those are the two things that I needed to be aware of. But other than that, Sharpedo was easily 2-hit KOing, if not OKing everything else. Um, so it was a big threat and he didn't have much priority that hit it hard. It was only the Talonflame, as I say, that uh, out, out prioritizes with the Brave Bird. Um, but he has the Aqua Jet on the Azumarill, which it can take, and the potential Sucker Punch on the Houndoom, which it can also take. So Sharpedo is looking good, and I wanted to bring it, because I hadn't had the opportunity yet, and I wanted to show off what it can do. Um, the other things I wanted to bring, I have got the potentially the best Talonflame stop in this uh, kind of thing that's available which is Rotom Heat so I wanted to bring that even if he didn't bring Talonflame Rotom is good against the team because he's got lots of steel types it takes steel hits really well got the overheat I can wisp stuff Volt Switch for initiative it's a great Pokemon I am falling in love with that little oven um, so I definitely wanted to bring Rotom Heat uh, the other stuff that I wanted to bring I wanted to I wanted to bring Defensive Roserade, and that's for two reasons. I've said that Ferrothorn is going to be a pain in the balls for my Sharpedo, so I wanted to switch in on that. And also, Azumarill, it's really nice to have a stop to that. So Defensive Roserade did, does those things. It does them great. I decided to run um, Technician Hidden Power Fire just to be able to hit the Ferrothorn hard and punish it a bit and also Sludge Bomb because it hits the things that Hidden Power Fire doesn't. Um, so that's great. I wanted Synthesis to keep it healthy and Spikes to keep uh, Offensive Pressure with the Hazards because I needed a bit of chip on some things before Sharpedo can take them out. Uh, next thing I wanted was a Skarmory to take on Excadrill, which I definitely thought was coming. My team is Hazards Rich, and his only thing to, to stop Hazards is Excadrill. So I definitely thought that would be coming. So I wanted Skarm to take that on. Um, and it also is just nice for any other physical attackers. It takes on Rachi well if it's physical. It takes on Azumarill well if it's physical. Why did I say Azumarill if it's physical? What? Anyways. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, that's why I brought Skarmory. It's also going to be my hazard control. So I'm going to... I put Defog on it, but I also wanted Rocks on it. Obviously, Talonflame is a thing. So I put those two moves on it. Wanted Roost on it uh, to keep it healthy for the drill. And then my final move was Whirlwind. Now, I don't often run uh, sets without any attacking moves because Taunt is the thing. I didn't see many Taunters on this team apart from maybe Talonflame. That's not something I'm going to be staying in on. Um, and I'm going to put Rocky Helmet on it, which is the thing that will deal the damage anyway, so I can potentially roost all stuff just with the Rocky Helmet. So that was the, that was the Skarm, which I was pretty pleased about. Um, I also wanted Sylveon. He had... I needed something for the special attackers. Sylveon was that thing. He had Hydreigon. Sylveon is a stop to that, especially with this beautiful EV spread that I got, which um, it means it can take two Iron Tails from a, a specially invested set really easily. But it also means that it can take uh, any hits from Raikou, which he has. It can. It's not even three hit KO'd by any of its moves. And it can take any moves from Mega Houndoom. It can take two Fire Blasts pretty easily and get up the Wish or just go for a Hyper Voice. So it was a really Really nice mixed effect. It was more defensively invested, but it had a, a, a good amount of spadef as well. Um, and really nice. It had Baton Pass, Hyper Voice, Wish Protect. 
very good for the team. And the final thing, now I, I undenied about this, went back and forth, wasn't sure. Um, Infernape matched up pretty well against him, but really it struggled with a lot of the same things that Sharpedo did. I mean, um, yeah, it, it didn't really take on Azumarill very well. The, the, the priority on his team basically meant that I would have to be switching out Infernape every time. And I didn't think that it was going to perform as well as what the thing that I went for, which was Mega Pinsir. Now, <clears throat> I decided that actually what I really needed was a Wall Breaker. And that's, I needed something to take out the stuff that Sharpedo would struggle with. Namely Ferrothorn really, um, because Ferrothorn would potentially be, a defensive Ferrothorn would potentially be a switch in on Pinsir, but I decided to go with an adamant Pinsir, Max Attack, uh, with the Return, Quick Attack, Close Combat and Knock Off. It was also for the Cofagrigus if it wanted to come in with Hazards, with, well with Rocks, uh, Return plus Knock Off is a potential KO, so um, it's just really powerful and Ferrothorn was not going to survive anything. It just took on so many things. Uh, the Quick Attack's nice as well and I didn't, it wasn't going to be a sweeping set. I was not going to be able to sweep with Pinsir here because he's got the Talonflame and he's got um, certain things that can take hits from the Pinsir. So I felt like I wanted to sweep with Sharpedo and just fuck stuff up with my Mega Pinsir because that's what he's great at. This team I was pretty comfortable with actually. I was really quite happy with how it turned out and I had a plan which is potentially the first time that's happened since the start of the GBA. I felt like I've just been putting things together and seeing how it works but I'm, I do feel like I'm finding my footing now and I felt like I had a plan which was nice. It was it felt nice and so that's what I need to strive for in the future I think. Anyways, looking at what John brought, he didn't bring the Raikou which I was quite, quite surprised at. I was Kind of predicting a Volt Turn thing from him. Um, but he didn't bring the Raikou, maybe because he thought I would bring Donphan, which is a, it's not even a... Donphan isn't a great stop to Raikou, really, because Raikou is so powerful. Um, but what he ended up bringing I wasn't too upset about. In fact, Sharpedo does the work. It's only the Talonflame that I need to stop. He didn't even bring Pharaoh, so it's literally just the Talonflame that I need to get rid of before Sharp can do a lot of work, which is beautiful. So let's get into this game. Um, I I wasn't sure what he was going to lead with. I led with Rotom because I thought I could Volt Switch if I don't like the matchup or whatever. Um, and if he goes with Talonflame, I'm already in. But that was probably a bad one because he wasn't going to lead with Talonflame. And he leads with Azumarill. I don't want to take the damage on this because I need it healthy for the Talonflame. Switch out into my defensive Roserade, best switching on Azumarill as he goes into Rachi. Don't like the matchup because he could have Psychic or something. Uh, so I go into my Skarmory as he sets up Rocks and can eat that Fire Punch easily. Go for the Defog here as he... Um, and he's going to go for the rocks again, so that's fine with me. I go for I go for my rocks here. It means that the rocks are up. I don't really want to defog while Talonflame is still around because I do want my own rocks up. Raji is fishing for that burn and it does get it, which is unfortunate. Uh, it's only a 20% chance, isn't it? I don't know. Or maybe it's higher than that, but it's really annoying. Uh, but I can easily... I, I've got the roost, so I can easily take on the Raji anyways. So I will end out the Raji and Skarmory's back at a nice amount of health. And now I'm going to switch out to Roserade, thinking he might want to just, I don't know, Moonblast or something. But John makes a really nice switch going into Houndoom here, because it takes on the Skarmory really well if I didn't switch out. But I switch out to my Roserade, which is the most likely switch in, and it takes that on really well as well. So that was a really great switch by John. I do have the Sylveon, though, which I have calculated can take on Houndoom very nicely. Um, only takes 42% from that Fire Blast. If I didn't have the special defense investment, that would have been 2 at KO. So good investment, good EV spread. I'm very happy with that. Throw up a wish here because I want my Sylveon to be at nice health uh, to take those Fire Blasts from the Houndoom. So I'm going to protect just to... And nab that wish on my Sylvia, not passing it to anything at this stage. Rachi's back in here. My best thing to deal with that really is the Rocky Helmet Scarm. I just need to roost stall it a bit. I know that he's got the Iron Head, and because I'm burned, it means that he will be able to spam that. Um, but I'm feeling like if I get one roost off, I will be able to. Uh, I will be able to beat this Rachi. Um, so he goes for another Iron Head here. As I do get the roost off, Rachi is looking low on health, and Skarmory does not have any any attacks at all and it's already taking Rachi down which is very nice because Rachi is always a problem. I uh, whirlwind here uh, as he goes into the Houndoom, not not sure why, maybe predicting that I was just going to keep roosting or maybe switching out into something, but it means that I get good damage on the Houndoom and it means that quick attack from Pinsir will be able to take that out later. 
Um, so I'm just going for some roosts here because as I said, I just need to get a roost off on the Rachi. But he gets another flinch, which is rather annoying. And I just need to get one roost off here because if I do that, then Rachi is looking very low. Skarmory is back up at health and that will be great. But nope. Nope. Ah, uh, this is what John does though. He did the same thing to me in the tournament. Very frustrating. Fishing for that hacks, which he gets here. Very annoying. Um, my scam goes down. Uh, potentially quite reckless for me because he still has his extra drill. Um, but I re I just wanted to get rid of the Rachi, to be honest. And uh, the Rachi goes down to my pincer, which does have speed. It meant that he was a bulky set. I wasn't actually sure of that at the time, but I didn't think he'd be able to take me out with anything. I stay in here with my pincer, even though I knew he was very likely to be scarf. I just go for the close combat. I was thinking he, even then he might predict my switch out and go for a spin, but he does go straight for the rock side and I get very lucky. So I'm feeling like that's payback for for his, uh, his attempts at going for the, the Iron Head. Anyway, he brings in his Aromatisse here. If that was especially defensive, that crit didn't matter. That was going to KO anyway. But if he was defensive, then I wouldn't have taken him out. But I would have still lived a hit, so I would have been able to take it out the next turn. He brings in his Talon Flame here, forces out my pincer, and goes for a SD. And I bring in my Rotom thinking I'm fine, but he has the natural gift with the Mickleberry making it a water type attack, taking out my only counter, and now it's just fodder type. This is horrific. I'm very scared right now. Um, I need to go and think into things with enough offensive pressure to make sure that the Talonflame kills itself without having the opportunity to roost. So that's what I do. The Talonflame does go down and I've still got my win conditions. I'm going to explain the end game right here because it, it could have been, it could have, I could have played it wrong. I could have gone into Sharpedo and tried to sweep straight away and that would have been wrong um, because if he had gone into Houndoom first and I had gone for a Protect, he could have Destiny Bond and then I would have not been able to take him out because obviously I'd take myself out and I need it to kill the Azumarill. So that's a problem. Um, so I couldn't have gone into Sharpedo then. Um, so I went into Pinsir because I know that if he goes into Houndoom, I kill it. And if he goes into Azumarill, I just get the Prior on and it means that I can bring in my Sharpedo the next turn on the Azumarill and poison jab it and then the houndoom can come in and i can hopefully take that out without taking too much damage from priority that was my plan anyway so i go for a quick attack here knowing that i die to an aqua jet so i need to get just that little bit of chip on the azuma as he brings it in and then i can bring in my sharpedo john's only hope was that i didn't have poison jab but because he did have two fairies and uh, i knew that he would likely be bringing azuma um, I do have the poison jab. Nibbles doing what he was brought in to do. And Nibbles is going to clinch the game because I will outspeed this uh, Houndoom already. He goes with the Sucker Punch. That's an uninvested Sucker Punch, I'm pretty sure. So it doesn't do enough. Um, and I can take out the Houndoom. So there it is. Uh, it was a 1-0, but it was a victory. My first GBA victory. It was a bit messy as well with hacks. On both sides, more on my side than on his, uh, but I would, yeah, I got through. I, I mean, the hacks was important. It made the game a lot easier for me, and as I took out his Excadrill and Aromatisse. But as I said at the beginning, the Sharpedo just matched up so well against his team. As soon as the Talonflame went down, it was going to do work. Nothing really could take the hits from it at all. Nothing. Um, Excadrill is O-Code, Rachi if it's Spadef is O-Code, um, I do a lot of damage to Azumarill with a Poison Jab, uh, depending on the set it does, it, it would KO after rocks, maybe not, it depends if he's invested in HP, Spadef or Speed, um, the Poison Jab does a lot of damage, again I'm not sure what the Aromatisse was, if it, it was potentially likely to be defensive, uh, seeing as though he brought it in on my pincer, but if it was Spadef, then that doesn't take the hits, and the obviously the Houndoom dies. So Talonflame was the only thing to stop my Sharpedo, which did the stuff. And that was the plan. And I actually, it went to plan. It was all great, um, but it was a great battle. John's Talonflame was insane. I was so scared of that thing. He said he could have run acrobatics on it. So when he gets rid of his berry, then he could have acrobatics the rest of, the rest of my things and won. Um, but he didn't, he didn't do that because if I didn't bring Rotom H and he didn't get the Mickleberry off, then he couldn't have acrobatics. Um, so that was how it went. It was a good battle. It was a very good battle. And I'm very happy to have won it. And it means that I'm now 
got a win under my belt and I'm going forward. And I feel like this is progression. I've got better each week. I definitely feel like I've got better each week. Getting more comfortable with my team, getting more comfortable with the format. And we can go from here, guys. This, the future is bright. The future is oranges and John Oranges because it's John Oranges. <laughs> I'm so funny. Oh, by the way, did you check out, check out the pins of a nickname if you missed it because that was funny. Um, I've been Fufu, you've been awesome, and hopefully see you next time. Bye.